All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to a very special to me edition of the DLF trade show. We had to take a week off so I could get in the mind frame. I can build up the excitement, get ready to talk about the 360 view of trading just one specific player. That's what we do now. But there's this, this one specific player. He means something to me. And I have to thank my boy Addison Hayes at Amaze Hayes underscore over here for helping me just spew my love. Because this is, you re you're ready for some bias, Addison? You ready? I'm ready. Because today we're talking about Calvin Ridley. Mm -hmm. Whew. All right. All right, I got it out. But it's drink. out in the open. It's out in the open. I'm ready to do this. Uh, but let's. I couldn't contain my excitement. Hey, Addison, how you doing, man? I know we had to take a week off. Super, my bad. But here we are. We're here again. How you been? Yeah, I've been. I've been great, man. I missed. I missed last week, but um, you know, I we decided to go with Calvin Ridley here for you to get you back into the swing of things, and we needed 100 percent russ fisher to talk about calvin ridley here and i've i've honestly i've been trying to love him as much as you do i don't know if that's possible I, that is not possible no but i do love my i do love me some calvin ridley he was on my uh championship team from my uh dlf champions cup league so i do love me some calvin ridley as well <laughs> and he's gonna be on a lot more championship teams this coming year woo woo i hope so because i have like 60 percent of my teams of calvin ridley on right. but okay let's not super about us right now what we're gonna do we are gonna walk down the calvin ridley trail of trade value we are going to say hey wide receiver wide receiver swap we're gonna say hey calvin ridley running back swap we're gonna say hey calvin ridley quarterback swap and then again i haven't looked I'm, every every time we do this i'm gonna keep a surprise because addison pulls an overpay and an underpay of a trade from the dlf analyzer i should say by the way and he finds these on the dlf trade finder which if you are not subscribe to dynastyleaguefootball.com and use those awesome tools because they will help you a gauge value b make trades c evaluate trades that are gone to, that are sent to you and that's i mean that's dynasty football for me i mean fantasy football that's you know 100%. that's all i do but let's jump in all right calvin ridley let's start at the beginning what did you, what order did you put me in all right we are doing running back swaps we have calvin ridley for 12 team superflex sorry calvin ridley for deandre swift and raheem mostert Let's just read the values first. Calvin Ridley worth 423.9, not nearly enough. There's gotta, we gotta add a few hundred to that. Uh, and then DeAndre Swift at 589.3 and Raheem Morris at a measly 65.1. Morris? Did you say Morris? Mostert, did I? Raheem Morris, That was that like a coach, right? Wasn't that the Broncos coach, Raheem Morris? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, all right, well, still, Raheem Mostert still in the analyzer at 65.1. So we are looking at 65.4 to 423.9. Now, here's the question I'm going to ask you right now, Addison. Mm -hmm. Who would you rather have on your dynasty team, Calvin Ridley or DeAndre Swift? Calvin Ridley, straight up. Like Again, like it's going to be tough for me to say other things because I am insanely biased right now. Um, we you i should say not we could i contributed a video to your video of the wide receiver one in in dynasty and i love calvin ridley but it's he's not it yet for me to me it's still Devonte adams okay no let's frame this from the other side deandre swift deandre swift i wish i had 80 people up but he's a top two round guy which means you're saying even in a super flex draft that you're telling me that Calvin Ridley is a top three wide receiver in Dynasty. Do you believe that? At least ADP wise, it would seem very, like that's where he would have to fall. He's very close, I think, because of the Julio Jones trade. Like you mm -hmm. basically you see all those splits where Calvin Ridley without Julio Jones is averaging over 100 yards per game. He's averaging like eight or nine receptions. So he could definitely go beast mode without Julio Jones, even with Kyle Pitts still there, you know, Russell Gage back behind him and stuff. Cause Matt Ryan loves to throw to Calvin Ridley. He knows who he has in, in his alpha wide receiver. And I think that conversation needs to be had in the dynasty community about Calvin Ridley being that high right now, especially whenever you think about 
um, with Julio Jones going to Tennessee and potentially knocking AJ Brown down. Yeah. Um, so I think that conversation is is a lot closer than people want to have right now. So yeah. Oh. Okay, but let's talk about what we have in front of us. I think what we are both saying is, with the values in the trade analyzer, I think we need to bump up Calvin Ridley, drop down DeAndre Swift a little bit. Right. And honestly... They're about a round apart right now, actually, looking at ADP. Uh, DeAndre Swift's at the 2-3 turn, and Ridley's at the 3-4 turn in Superflex, which is really interesting. And it was June. You're looking at... I think there was June out ready, right? Yeah. There you go. Oh, and just to put it out there, even though... I know this is a DLF trade show, but I'm just going to bring up Twitter for a second. There was a poll on Twitter this morning. Who would you rather have on your dynasty team, Ridley or Swift? And at the time, there was about 300 something votes and Ridley was up 65-35. So I think that, again, means that the analyzer, I maybe just needs to catch up to that Julio news, needs to catch up to the insanity that's going on. But I think I, I think this is a fair trade. You know, again, we are paying up to who we now fully believe is the higher asset, I guess. Like, again, it's like to me, the two of them are probably pretty equal. I think they're both going to be end of the second round, beginning of the third round guys in a super flex draft. Right. So, yes. And if you ask me wide receiver, team wide receiver over team running back, in which case you throw in a little bit just to sweeten the pot. And that's what Raheem Mostert is, because I still think he's going to get the ball and, and like. That dude's fast. and He's got the first chance, for sure. Yeah. So I, I think that is a pretty decent trade where you are pretty much, like, if you have to start two running backs in a league, you, you just found your two starters. You got your super solid RB1 in DeAndre Swift, who I still firmly believe, regardless of what Detroit has turned into, is a, an insanely solid starter. And Raheem Mostert, I think, is a great number, too, because I don't like having multiple valuable running backs on my team. That's yeah. just how I build, at least. Yep. That was the discussion I'm glad that we had, because when I saw the trade analyzer values, I was confused on to why there was a 200 point difference between these two sides, because I, I felt that it was a lot closer. So I'm glad, obviously, you do as well. Yeah, I, I really think in application, it, it definitely is a lot closer than it is in numbers. Right. All right, let's move on to the next one, a one QB trade. Uh, straight up, Calvin Ridley for Derrick Henry. In one QB, Ridley is worth 664, and Derrick Henry is worth 687.7. And to me, this... I don't know if this is... You know, see, 687 is so high. DeAndre Swift will probably be higher also, but I'm, I'm still into Derrick Henry. I know he's probably one to two years at most you can trust him, but... Like we just said, Calvin Ridley, probably around a second, third round pick, is in a one QB. Derrick Henry is probably beginning of the second round at that point. So, yeah, uh, Derrick Henry is probably a, a what, third round rookie pick higher in, in the analyzer, which means yeah. they're pretty much even enough, which means, yeah, cool, fair swap. If this were me, I would easily take Ridley just because you are going to get a lot more years out of him than Derrick Henry. But the potential for maximum point getting right now might be on the henry side oh yeah yeah it's it's henry i think because i um ultimately this is going to be a do you need running back depth for a true like compete like this is the only way that you're really making this trade is if you have extra wide receiver depth and you need that one elite running back for a 2021 push or yep. you know or maybe you're trying to just see what you have in 2021 and 2022 because i think that's about the window that we're looking at Derrick Henry right now. And then you're probably just going to, you know, ride Derrick Henry into the sunset. At that, You don't point. have a choice <laughs> after, especially so, after this year. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think that this was just interesting because I liked how close it was. Uh, and it mm -hmm. shows, I think, Ridley's value in terms of staying within the production, uh, like of the productions kind of where he's at with the running back equivalent. So that's uh, that's where I think it's. It is definitely a good trade, in my opinion, with uh, with Derrick Henry. Okay, let's move on to Superflex. I had I froze for a little second trying to read this next one. Twelve team Superflex. Calvin Ridley for Tua Tonga Vailoa. You want to go yeah. first? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this one. This one is to me. I think I want Calvin Ridley. Like Tua is not good enough of a quarterback for me to move off of Calvin Ridley. I feel like I could get more, like a better quarterback. You know. But when you look at like other quarterbacks, at least in the trade analyzer, from a trade analyzer perspective, like you're in that Tua, 
Baker Mayfield, you know, kind of range with the quarterbacks for him in a super flex, which I don't necessarily, again, this might be because I love Calvin Ridley probably more than the average person. So I'm a little bit biased and I like him a lot more, but I feel like you should be, you're not getting into the Justin Herbert, you know, oh, no, top no, no, tier yeah. with Calvin Ridley. But I feel like unless I'm mistaken, like this next tier of quarterbacks should be where Calvin Ridley is. And I feel like two is like not in that tier, or maybe I'm just valuing Calvin Ridley too high in a super flex. I'm not 100% with you, man. Like that's, that's why I let you go first. Cause I didn't want to yeah. just like write it off and don't get me wrong. I even like Tua as a QB two on my super flex team, but he's absolutely a tier three for me. And yeah. like you said, you should be getting a tier two guy. Like, I'm like, probably you get Russell Wilson is is that yeah I think you should be able to I don't necessarily want to do that but that's besides the point but like if someone goes hey Calvin Ridley for Ryan Tannehill or Calvin Ridley for and who's like a good QB like six seven like if someone came to me Lamar Jackson I mean because he's dropped a little bit over time like those will you're getting Lamar. Again, that's if someone comes to you with it, that's what I'm saying. You know, who would I give up Ridley for is, is how I'm trying to have this conversation in my head. And I guess to you, uh, who could you get for Ridley is a different conversation, but it would take that for me to think about giving up Ridley, someone who will actually make an immediate difference on my team. Do I think Tua can be that guy? I, I do. I'm a Tua fan. I think, he, but he's not yet. And Ridley is that as a wide receiver that that's my my jumble and trying to kind of put this specific trade together. If you were trying to rebuild or at least somewhat reload, would you consider moving Ridley for Lance or Fields, one of those rookie guys after Trevor Lawrence? I feel like you don't, you can't go all the way down to Zach Wilson, but no, Lance I, or Fields, I feel like would be right in that conversation. I would need a kicker, but yes, uh, that is something I would do. Um, you in Superflex, you do want to, you want to start with QB build, but next you go to wide receiver. And I mean, if you're full rebuilding, are you going to call a 26 year old wide receiver old? Hopefully not. Depends but on how long your rebuild. For. Yeah. It's like if you're going year, on a two know. year year, if you're going on a two year rebuild, you should trade Ridley now because he's going to hit 28 and look at Hopkins and Devontae Adams and all their trade value now. Just they're still at the top of their game, but the trade values in the tank because age matters too much to people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if I was I took over an open team or I finished a dispersal and my team is just not pretty looking, I would absolutely say, hey, you take Calvin Ridley, you give me Trey Lance and like maybe a second round wide receiver in a rookie draft, like throw me. Uh, Tony, one of the I'm one of the Moors, Moore. Kadarius Tony. I I mean I I'm a little think I'm getting yeah I think I'm convincing myself to like Amon Ross St Brown more and more. Two oh, let's let's just get back to it. I don't think I said it out loud. Ridley is four twenty three point nine to a four oh seven. So according to the analyzer, it is close. But like we've been saying this whole time, we think Ridley needs that boost. Yeah, I don't know what the boost is though because I'm looking at June ADP. Russell Wilson is QB eight. Ahead of him is like Lawrence, Dak, Herbert, Jackson, and then you get into the top three. Yeah. After Wilson comes Joe Burrow, who I think um, some people depends on the Joe Burrow person. Yeah, that depends on who on has whether him. or not he loves Joe Burrow or not. Justin Fields, Aaron Rodgers, which I'm not trading Calvin Ridley for Aaron Rodgers in a super flex. Well, given what's going on with him right now and the fact that he's like 43, yeah, that's gonna yeah. be a little tough. Trey Lance, Jalen Hurts. Yeah. I'm not doing Jalen Hurts. People would, though. If you are a believer in Jalen Hurts, I think that would be a fair trade. Deshaun Watson. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Stafford. And then Tua oh, Baker. Good for Matt Stafford. Stafford finally being that high up. I love it. Good for him, man. But yeah, at that point, when you hit that Matt Stafford, you need plus for Ridley. Let's go to wide receivers. Uh, wide receivers, 12-team super flex. We have Calvin Ridley for Deontay Johnson and Jalen Waddle. That's not enough. I... Uh, will say i like deontay johnson i like the idea of jalen waddle neither idea. <laughs> we don't know what he is yet right. uh, and i we were talking about too uh, he's jalen waddle is a different guy i guess now that you're counting will fuller i forgot that he was there but like not for the first game 
I think Waddle will do well. I think he will be a very used wide receiver on the team. And Deontay Johnson is super targeted with, you know, he is Jarvis Landry, right? Like he gets eight catches for 70 yards. Yeah. So, but man, Calvin Ridley, who to me is easy top five dynasty wide receiver, will should score i can't say will because i can't predict the world you know should score as a top 5 10 wide receiver this year i need something more solid than the two of them and even if i'm rebuilding that's not enough value let's talk before i ask you how you feel the trade analyzer 423.9 for ridley 364.7 for the total of deontay johnson and jalen waddle and I'm going to keep saying it every single time. And again, we've decided that Ridley does need that little bit of a bump. So this is really low for Calvin Ridley for me. Yep. Yeah, I'm not on board with it. I think the next trade is much more interesting uh, because it's very similar. But I think yes. the players are better. And, and it's funny. I was going to use one of these players. So let's just skip right to it. 12 team, one quarterback. Calvin Ridley, four. T. Higgins, Devontae Smith, and a 22 third. Let's just sort of throw that out there. Because actually, the package value adjustment is more than the value of a 22 third. <laughs> so that, yeah, that, if anything, that just doesn't help. All right. So I, first of all, need everyone to know that I yelled at Addison for making me decide in the trade between Ridley and Higgins because I love both of them. This, to me, if I'm rebuilding, if I'm in that team that is very, very bad, and I want to go to youth, I need young everything, I'm starting completely over, this is a trade I would make. Yeah. Again, super biased because I love T. Higgins. I like the idea of Devonta Smith in Philly. And yay, 22 third, I guess. I don't know. Like, to me, okay, sorry, value. Anal I get I'm way too excited to talk about Ridley and, and Higgins. Uh Ridley is 664 in one quarterback. Higgins 4094 and Devontae Smith 325.2. With the pick and the adjustment, that total is 712.8. So 712.8 to 664. What do we say every single episode? You need to overpay a little bit to get to the stud. This is perfect. This is I love this trade in every sense of it. Depending on your team. You do either side of this, and you'll get the uh, rust thumbs of approval. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm exactly with you. This basically equals out to like T Higgins in a mid first, like a 106, 107 in one quarterback leagues yeah. um, for Calvin Ridley, which I think is like perfect value. That's basically saying that's that's basically two firsts at that yeah. point. So I think Higgins is basically a first as well in that mid. I, he dang well should be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> somewhere in there, 104 to 107, somewhere in there. Speaking of very good young wide receivers, you pulled another one. This is Calvin Ridley for Jamar Chase and 222 seconds. All right, let's just throw it out there. This is one quarterback again. Ridley, 664. Jamar Chase, 612. Mm -hmm. So our, let's pretend we're straight up valuing in draft picks jamar chase in a one qb is probably around that two three spot right like you probably have harris and then it's probably pitzer chase at least that's what it is in my mind uh well he's he's probably consensus 101 right now in one chase quarterback. yes oh nice good for him man but and at worst 103 when you're talking about him Harris and Pitt. exactly right that's why I touched the two three and usually people love their running backs as the 101 so I really should be more prepared and have that beautiful wonderful amazing DLF ADP pulled up while we're recording the DLF trade show but I am ill prepared because I was just too excited to get started He's one but in perfect so pretty much what you're telling me in here is that Calvin Ridley is worth the 102 and I can get behind that in this year's like in, in this year's draft. I guess the 101 technically because if it's worth a little bit more than the 102. But I would also take Ridley over Harris, so I don't really necessarily know how that computes in my brain. <laughs> yeah, so maybe just ignore everything I just said now that I had to think about it out loud. Um would you do let's say you're rebuilding cuz I stole all the thunder from the last trade. If you're rebuilding, do you drop down from Calvin Ridley to Jamar Chase and just a nice little kicker of 2 seconds? Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, yeah you, I think you have to if not only for the potential value that Jamar Chase is going to have over the next couple of years, like everybody is expecting him to basically come out and 
take second seat to T Higgins. Yeah, exactly. No, okay, so everybody minus <laughs> you is expecting Jamar Chase to basically be the wide receiver one on the Bengals and have yeah. like seventy five for a thousand and seven or eight in his rookie year. That's essentially <laughs> what we're looking at right now. Um, but that hasn't happened yet. And if it does happen, then It'll we're talking off. about Jamar Chase as wide receiver one overall in Dynasty. Yeah, we're like, probably not just in Jefferson level, like the, how crazy it went because he literally set records. Yeah. But if Jamar Chase just has what we would call a good season, not for a rookie, but like for a wide receiver, like you said, 75, 1100 and maybe yeah. eight, six or I eight. Mean, if, if he's if he's CD Lamb last year, which yeah. wasn't a thousand yard receiver, but still like 900. And especially yeah. when you could write it off because of his quarterback situation. But I guess, Potentially. well, Burrow should be ready in time. But still, we could be saying he had, he might have a few games without top Burrow. So, yes, so easy to see a picture where Jamar Chase becomes top three wide receiver. Pretty easy. Yeah. Yep, he would definitely be in that wide receiver one discussion. And I don't think as much as Calvin Ridley is fantastic and as... I would ultimately expect him to have a top five wide receiver performance this year in 2021, like he did last year. That's not going to do anything because he's going to, everybody's going to see the number 27 yep. right next to his name because Calvin Ridley will be 27 next year. So that's not going to matter because if Jamar Chase and Calvin Ridley are putting up similar ish numbers, if Chase is like wide receiver 13 this year and Ridley's wide receiver four, but there's a five year age difference that's, it's not going to matter. So Chase is already going to be valued more than Kevin Ridley probably next year. Okay, so now we are done with our wide receiver. We're done with our running back. I'm scrolling down as we go. Let's go to the overpay trade. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, wow. This is a, okay. 12 team, one quarterback. Derek Henry, Calvin Ridley, Dak Prescott for a total of 1,626.2, Clyde Edwards Alaire, Chase Claypool, the 201, a 22 second, and Paris Campbell. I wouldn't trade Calvin Ridley for CEH Chase Claypool, 201, a future second, Paris Campbell. Is that just me? <laughs> um, no, I think I'm pretty <laughs> as well on that one. Yeah. Oh man, so maybe you just found a couple of bad trades. Oh yeah, that next one's terrible. I, no, yeah, so you found you found two bad. underpays. So yeah, yeah, this one's rough. Sorry, sorry if you're listening, and if you're listening, it's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry for what we're about to say and what I've said already, but you'll get over it. You'll make another trade. You'll start to feel better. I, I, Calvin Ridley is six sixty four in the in the analyzer and one QB. Clyde Edwards Alaire. And and Chase Claypool do total over 800. They, they're about 900 points together. I don't think you can convince me that Calvin Ridley and Clyde Edwards Hilaire are that close. It's I maybe it's just I'm not a CEH guy. I d doesn't seem like Kansas City wants him to be the guy. They are always trying to or always bringing in running backs. It just he'll be good. Don't get me wrong. He's a good running back. I just, I just don't think he's great. And we're not even talking about the fact that Derrick Henry is in this trade at 687 points. We're not even talking that Dak Prescott, even in one quarterback, is 274.5. Yeah. Like, this is this is rough, man. Yeah. But I do yeah. want Paris Campbell to be a thing. That, that's, that's what I'll leave this trade with. I really want Paris Campbell to stay healthy and be a thing. Because 42.7 just hurts my soul. Yeah, I don't really understand the uh, motivations behind trading away henry ridley and Dak for all of this i mean they got younger that's it i guess so like uh, if you're just basically but like it's funny because if you're in a 12 team one quarterback league those are your three core pieces how are you considering yourself a rebuild unless you have zero depth behind you could be like i don't know how you consider yourself a rebuild when you have a potential top five quarterback a top five running back and a top five wide receiver in 2021 I I don't have a real answer. <laughs> you're getting Clyde, who's maybe a fringe RB one. Yeah. Claypool, a high upside wide receiver three. Yeah, that's what I could. Uh, I'm glad you went there. That's exactly where I was going. I like it. Yeah. Um, and then you have dart throws in a 2021 201, which is basically like. 
Trey Sermon, Michael Carter. Yeah. A 22 second and Paris Campbell, who is also a dart throw. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's there's, yeah, there's, again, you found this trade for a reason. All right, let's go to one that's really just going to. <sighs> All right. 10 team super flex. Calvin Ridley for a 22 first and Donovan Peoples Jones. Why? 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 <laughs> Why? I like... have this 22 first for you. And to sweeten the deal, I'm going to throw in Donovan Peoples Jones. Don't get me wrong. I had a lot of fun where, okay, this almost sounds really mean. Like after OBJ got hurt, like Donovan Peoples Jones had a really good game that first game. So, of course, I tweeted out who he needs like two for 80. That was like all he did. That does, all I said was that one game. That's all that mattered. Because right at when that was happening, I typed who needs OBJ when you have DPJ. And I felt so freaking clever about it. And, and I mean, let's call it what it is. Donovan Peoples Jones, he was a five star wide receiver coming out of high school. He went to Michigan, where I mean, sorry, not Our too many wide receivers suck. And... Yeah, no, no one really, you know, comes out of there all that well. So maybe he does take that third year breakout. I think this is only a second year, right? Or no, third year. This is his third year. Like maybe he comes out. Maybe he does break out a little bit with OBJ. Maybe not at 100%. Jarvis Landry being Jarvis Landry or whatever. But even still, I got no justification for this whatsoever. So if you can go through your league with your 22 first and be like, hey, hey, I'll give you my first in some depth for Calvin Ridley. Why not? If it works, it worked for this guy. So j try, see what happens. I think DPJ makes this trade worse, to be honest with you. I'd rather just have the first. <laughs> it's just a roster spot, I'm sure. Like, I mean, no, he's like, like to me, like he's he's a waiver wire guy. And I'd rather just have that bench spot to wait until week one to pick up somebody that I think could do better. Yeah, but then you just drop DPJ and pick up someone else. I mean, but you, I don't want to. But I'd rather just. just but when DPJ first. goes nuts week one, you're gonna have to use all your fab just no. to get him back. No, Ryan. just just saying, man. No. <laughs> uh, well, on that wonderful note, this is the end of Calvin Ridley week on the DLF Trade Show. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for enabling my insanity with calvin ridley addison i'm glad you agreed with me on pretty much all of it which makes me feel maybe not less crazy but i'm glad there's someone else in the crazy with me because yeah. I, I i choose ridley and everything and it's just the way it went but thanks for tuning in thanks for watching listening whatever you're doing we appreciate the heck out of it this is the dlf trade show i am your host Russ Fisher at Dynasty Outhouse. He is also your host, Addison Hayes at Amaze Hayes underscore. And we'll catch you next time.